This is the future. future good day guys i urge you to please watch the video from beginning to end there's a lot of information that's shared during the video and not at the end or at the beginning thank you hi guys and welcome back to my channel and this video is about the idling again i'm seriously so fed up with all this nonsense that's happening on this cars i can't get this stuff running for longer than six months um, if you guys remember this video that's up here if you want to go check it out we had a problem with the idling on the Corsa high idling um, and high fuel consumption six months later the problem is back the problem is I changed the sensor again two days ago and it didn't fix the problem I'm still having the same issues so let's take this video take it step by step and diagnose the problems from beginning to end so before we start, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Give this video a like and subscribe to my channel and remember to hit that bell icon so that you can get notified of my further uploads. Feel free to check out my updated website and or join my Facebook group to get behind the scenes info. Before we get to the video, here is a short disclaimer for you guys. Please take note, all repairs and reviews are done by myself for myself and all my own products and property. I fix problems as I find them and I do a first impression review on products that I buy. So if you have a question for me on a product or you have a complaint about a product, I apologize if I cannot give you a proper answer. Remember if a product is faulty, please take it back to where you bought it. And if there's any other problem that I have never encountered before, I will try and find the answer for you. Anyway, let's get to the video. Okay guys, let me show you exactly what is happening with this car. Okay guys, so I replaced this sensor literally three days ago and uh, it's still not fixed. So this car is due for service. So what we are going to do is we're going to start with a new air filter, cleaning the air sensors and the air pipe, seeing if there's any issues there. Continuing to the throttle body, disassembling it and cleaning it properly because I don't think it's ever been cleaned. And then we will look at the sensors last. Hopefully we can get the problem sorted. Start the car. And immediately it revs up to 2000. Now the rest comes down. Happy chappy, we're happy. The fuel consumption in the first place is too heavy. I drove yesterday to work and back, which is about 60 k's, and it fell from half to quarter. Okay guys, we have just replaced the air filter and we cleaned the air filter box. Next up in line, I'm going to remove the throttle body so we can use some carb cleaner and clean the throttle body out. Okay guys, I was unable to remove the throttle body because there's this little bolt sitting right there and unfortunately I cannot reach it with a spanner, I cannot reach it with a shifting. I'm not going to remove the entire alternator just to get to that bolt. So what I did is I took some degreaser, washed out the springs, cleaned here, cleaned there, refitted the pipes and uh, removed the, the two sensors. Now I'm going to use carb cleaner and we're going to spray it in here and there and there and see if we can clean out whatever needs to be cleaned out. I would have preferred to take this whole section out and clean it decently but unfortunately I can't get in there. Okay guys, so we are done with what we could do today. Took some carb cleaner, I sprayed the inside there, sprayed in there, sprayed in there. Replaced the two sensors, this pipe was cleaned, new air filter put in and cleaned. So from here up to here, we've done everything. If the problem persists, then we'll check the electrical cables for uh, a fluctuation. Uh, like I told you last time, if you take off this cable and it dips in revs, then this is working fine. If this does the same with that one, it's working fine. But if you remove the cables and nothing is happening, one or both are faulty. Well, the car is idling fine for now. I don't trust it, to be honest. 
I've been starting it a couple of times and then it idles idles good and uh, until I start actually driving engine jet light is off it's idling at a thousand so tomorrow morning I'm going to church and I will record for you if this if it starts with its nonsense again then I'll show you what happens but for now it's done hi guys and here we are again look at where this car is revving it's the next morning nothing has changed in fact I think it's worse as you guys can see my foot is off the pedal oh, I'll show you it's off the pedal it's not on the pedal look at where this car is idling so we need to go and fault find this problem good morning guys we are back day three and I went and bought a new sensor again this time uh, was it Sebring and uh, I got some interesting information today I actually called the dealership themselves and guess what this part is discontinued so not even the dealership is selling this part anymore which means that I have to start thinking of selling this car as soon as possible before there won't be any more spares left to keep this car running yeah that's correct Opel themselves has discontinued the spot okay guys changing it did not fix the problem so you guys are probably wondering why did I buy, buy a secondary sensor it's because remember when I told you that fluctuation story don't trust it anymore when I took off the cable it wasn't fluctuating therefore I thought that unit was faulty Whereas all the other sensors, when I took off the electrical cable or the pluggy, it was fluctuating. That's why I thought they were operational. And also, this time, it goes to show that if the engine check light doesn't go on, it doesn't mean a specific sensor isn't faulty. The problem remains. Okay, that's weird. Maybe it was because of the cold start. Maybe that's why it was high. Um, I'll drive with it to school and back and see if it makes a difference. Um, that was weird. Maybe it's because it's cold. I mean, it's the first time the car starts today. It is winter. Um, engine check light is off idling at exactly the same place as yesterday new component is in um, ah, ah, there we go okay Again, taking the plug off makes no difference. That made a difference when I took this off. So that sensor is working. So that is not our problem. Moving the map sensor, it's not our problem. I think this wire is off somewhere. Morning guys. There's definitely a ghost in this machine. I am a bit more convinced it's a cable electrical issue that's just missing is a car around I've been driving from the house to the hospital today and the car is running perfect didn't have any issues no high revving the fuel is, is good that engine check light came on once as you guys can see it dips now and then but it's not revving high anymore so 
I, I feel at this point I shouldn't touch any cables anymore. I must just leave it as this. Um, so I'm not sure why this is the problem. I'm going to take it for diagnostic eventually during the month. And then I will show you what the outcome of that is. But for now, it's running alright. I was able to take the car to a mechanic friend of mine who's also with me in church. And um, we started to test um, various plugs and electricals. The problem with the electricals is that it's running in millivolts. So you cannot test it on a uh, test light. So we had to start looking for a mechanical reason why the car was idling so high. Okay, now to try. Here it is. Here it is. Suddenly, as you guys heard, the car started revving up. Then we realized that the um, pipe that has the throttle cable in gets stuck. Um, it's not in its correct position. And every time you, the, the throttle um, is opened, it gets opened up in its, in, in its stuck in an open position. So we saw that the spring on the um, throttle body is a bit loose. So we decided to take the spring around one more time to make the spring a bit stiffer, to make sure that the um, throttle opens and closes faster and more responsively. Because at that moment in time, we thought that that was the issue. That the throttle body um, doesn't close fast enough and that the rev comes down too slow because of that. Those open wires on the sensor cables, we just made them nice and neat. Okay guys, there we go. It's idling at a thousand. I've driven now from that guy's house to my house. It hasn't once, not once, over revved. What it does do now is, when it started, it starts a bit high. And it takes a bit of time for it to come back down. But once it's there, it stays there. When I drive and I stop at a stop street, it comes down a bit slow, but it does come down. It doesn't go up anymore. The engine check light hasn't gone on once. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna check it now for the rest of this week. If by Sunday, this car is still running the way it's running now without any issues, then I'll call it a win. And then I will obviously post the video for you guys so you can see what the problem was this time hi guys so just a quick update um, it is now almost three days later since we did the last uh, check for the fault and you know, had to see what's wrong with it and uh, today it's doing totally something new um, it's going from in one extreme to the other extreme now when I stop at the stop street, it either dies completely and it starts quickly, so it's not a problem. And then the next moment, it revs up again to about 4,000 revs. It doesn't go back to that 1,000 feet spot. That mechanic friend of mine were able to um, organize a diagnostic computer. We put up the diagnostic and this was the result. According to the computer, all three sensors is malfunctioning and I thought to myself there's no way that all three of them can malfunction uh, one of them is definitely messing around the other two and since I've already replaced the idling control sensor I thought the only thing that rep that needs replacing now is the idling positioning sensor but it's not fluctuating when I take off the cable the engine check light doesn't come on every time I drive so I went with my gut and I changed it. But before that we decided to clean the throttle body as promised. Okay guys, so I have reconnected the battery, it's about 5 minutes, the computer was supposed to reset, let's start the car and hope for the rest. A 
and there we are. Car is idling, I'm supposed to idle. Uh, it seems fine, but as you guys know, I don't trust it. Let's drive to the mall and see if we have finally won the bloody situation. Hi guys, so that is where the car is revving now when I'm freeing downhill. So the gear is not engaged, so it seems like the car is finally, finally fixed. I am happy to report that we found the problem. Um, so yeah, it was all the time the TPS sensor. The TPS sensor messes around the entire system. It gives you false readings, false leads, and um, I mean it in even indicated that it was functioning normally, when in fact it wasn't. So yeah, guys, uh, hopefully this will be the end and I won't struggle with this again. Good morning guys. So this was the fault on the unit. Your idling positioning sensor. Remember when we said in the beginning that if you take off an electric cable, and there's a fluctuation that means the unit is working well what have I learned from this whole experience number one never trust any electronic equipment even though it was working it was not working correctly so when I changed this one the first time I should have gone over to that one but because there was no fluctuation fluctuation when we took off this wire I was under the impression that this one is faulty but this one was affecting everything it was affecting this sensor as well as the map sensor and that's where our problem is so in future I would suggest that if you have an idling problem like I had now change both just to be on the safe side and like we also said, um, Opel has discontinued these parts. So you're going to have to get aftermarket parts. And in that case, make sure that the part you're getting is made for this car. Because the ohmage, or the voltage settings, or whatever you want to call it, the resistance, is not the same for every car. If you get the wrong one for the wrong car, it's not going to work properly. So I hope this will be the last time that this mistake happens and now at least you guys have a definitive place to look for when when this issue arises again okay awesomeness